take a second to check out my Patreon page guys, your support is really appreciated. Enjoy the tutorial. Hey guys and welcome to the 13th Windows Phone uh, tutorial. Um, I'm quite excited to be doing this tutorial, it's been a while since I've had a chance to actually do some. Um, and basically one I've been really wanting to do but dreading doing because I have a feeling it's going to be complicated for people. Um, and one thing that I always wanted to learn. Um, obviously this is going to be really cool if you can get it to work. Because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get um, the MySQL server to actually talk to the, pho uh, talk to the phone. So we're talking MySQL. Um, and that means that we'll be able to have high scores for data in databases and stuff for games on your mobile. Um, or you can store just about anything really because it's just going to be a way of communicating between the database. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to do this via um, PHP, which means if you're going to do any sort of uh, game related kind of things on the phone or anything that involves a score or holding any data, um, then I presume you probably have a server of your own anyway um, for doing this. So this is all based on the idea that you have your own website or you have a way of hosting files that you know you can upload and whatever from and that have access to execute PHP um, and you obviously you're also going to need a MySQL database now I can't really go into the, um, the details of setting up a database and all that kind of stuff but if you do have them in place I can show you how to make it work with the phone so what I was also told is in the previous tutorials with the accelerometer, you guys really liked the fact that I wasn't writing the code and I was just explaining it in the app, uh, in the tutorials. So we're going to go ahead and do that again this time. So the only things that have changed since the last video is um, I've got the new toolkit for the Windows 8.1, but this is still a Windows 8 app. I'm just using the 8.1 emulator, so there's nothing's really different. Um, now, basically, all I've got on this page here is a list box which is called score list box I have a uh, text block here which is status text and then I have the button which is check button so all these literally are just three little individual controls one of them is obviously the button which is going to be what sends our request um, the status text is literally just in case you have a slightly slower internet connection and you're thinking is it working isn't it working I've kind of added a few bits that will actually let you know what's happening as you're um, sending your requests or if you actually decide to deploy this to your mobile um, then it could take a bit longer if you're using your 3G connection or whatever um, and then obviously the list box here is so that we can have multiple high scores kind of listing themselves out so what we're gonna do is first of all look at the actual code um, so in the code here we have some of the stuff we're used to seeing and then obviously bits that we're not so what we're going to be doing is a web client. Now, the first thing that happens is when you click on the button, we want the text to change. So the text is going to change to checking for scores. So we know that it's doing something. Um, at that point, it will then use this web client. Now, the web client will, um, you basically enter your address as to where the file, the PHP file, which I will go through in a minute, is being hosted. Um, and you do um, the address and then you have to add a question mark on the end of it. Um, because then that's kind of PHP's way of picking up any additional information and it won't affect the actual URL. If you don't put that question mark in, it will become like an, an existing page because normally after the question mark you'll add um, all different things that you can use for get requests um, in PHP. It all gets a bit complicated but literally if you just put a question mark and then you plus date time dot now. Now the only reason we do this is because Windows Phone uh, tries to be smart by caching the pages so if you don't add that on the end and you just keep checking your high score PHP page even when you shut the app and reopen it it will just load the exact same data back um, even if your scores have changed in the database because it remembers what was already on that page um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do plus date time dot now because obviously there will never be this date and time again unless someone wants to give me some crazy theory um, that we are in fact going to live life all over again but till that, I'm going to keep using that statement. So, you know, that's how it is. Um, and then after that, we're going to have um, the open read complete event. Now, this is going to be uh, what's going to get executed once it's gone, got the page and come back. So in effect, what we're actually doing is we're just reading the page. Uh, we're getting your, your phone's going to just download the website and it's going to basically look at the page, get the information off the page, and then we're going to use it. 
So this is why we write our own PHP, which I'll go over in a second. So we've got the get scores, uh, open read complete. Uh, that's leading us to this little, uh, this little bit here. Now, uh, everything is in try and catch because it can go wrong. You can lose signal or whatever, and you have to have ways of catching that. Otherwise, the app will crash, and then I don't know, hell will open up and eat everybody. So we're going to use the try and catch here, and what we're going to have is this bit here. It will say using uh, the reader and the news in the stream reader, and E will be the result. So. Um, Basically, what we've got here is what's coming back. This is all part of you know the web client's reading complete event. Um, and on the top here, we're going to have our initial split. So I don't know if you've seen it before. I'm pretty sure I would have gone over it. Um, if you have, if you write string like you normally would, but you put these little square brackets after, you're effectively splitting, um, which in, in essence you're making an array. So um, we do this res this string here with the response, and we do the reader. Uh, which we know here is what is coming back from the page, which is the E result. So we read it to the end, and then we split it. Now the reason we're splitting it on the app will come clear in a minute, but I'll go through all of this first. So the first thing that will happen when we get our information is it will be split on every app symbol. Now, once it's split it on every app, it will then say, okay, how many are there in total? Well, we have the response, which is our split here, in length minus one now the reason we have minus one again i will explain in the php page um, then we just have another little integer here of i equals zero um, we're going to clear the list box because you're going to you know likely to press the button more than once and if you press it and keep pressing it it will just keep adding more and more to the list box without actually clearing the stuff that was there before um, so then all we have is a while loop so what we're doing here is we're saying while i is less than the total amount that we've actually found um, then we want it to start putting out some data. So we're doing another split in here, and this time we're splitting the response, um, and we're going to split it on i. Now i in this first case, as we go through this while loop, will be zero. So what that will in essence give us is the first section. So if there's some text and then there's an at sign, it will give us everything before the first at symbol in a line of code. Now it might sound complicated, but it will make sense. I will make sure I show you how it works. Um, and then we're going to split it again with, on uh, these little wiggly lines. I'm sure someone has a name for that, but I don't think it needs one. It's just a wiggly line. Um, and then once we've split on that, we then have a new split that we can use. So as you can see, our response split, we did bracket I, and that's given us the whole line of what was up to each at symbol. And then here when we're splitting again, we're using the wiggly line. Now we know that with this wiggly line in our PHP, we're going to have something to the left of it and we're going to have something to the right of it. And the reason we know that is because we've written the PHP. So then what we do is we do the score list box, we add the item and we're going to use the split data which we've got here. And this time instead of using I, we're going to use a number because we know we want the first bit, so the bit to the left of the wiggly line. So that's zero. And then we're going to add that um, as a string and we're going to make sure that we put a space in between it a little equal sign another space just so we can see the data separated and then we're going to do it again with a one now that's going to take the second piece of information in this new array that we've made and we know we want the one because one comes after the zero which means we're going to be on the other side of whatever is in between whatever's in this wiggly line so we've got the first part and the second part all we do then is we have i++, which is going to add 1 to the i, and then it's going to say, right, is i still less than the total amount of splits? And if it is, then it's going to go back around again, but this time, i will actually be 1. So then it's going to go through this same loop, but we're actually going to be using a different section of information that's in between the next at symbol. So, then we have our status text once it actually finishes, you know, checking all of the... Uh, records that we've got back. We're going to have the status text that we put on the front page to say that our scores have been gathered. Now if it failed, it will tell us that the scores failed to collect. It's as simple as that. So that's all the code that you're going to need. Um, now what you're probably going to need is, um, I don't know, to pause and maybe, you know, don't shoot yourself, but go run your head under the shower or something because this gets complicated. Um, so now we're going to look at our PHP. Now what we have here is the highscore.php page, which we can see in our app. Um, 
we're we're going through my website here, which I'm using. I've got the I've got a folder called like a directory called tutorials, and then I've got highscore.php. Now, when it opens the page up, it's going to connect to the database. So first things first is I've hidden my database information purely for the tutorial. Um, this isn't necessary for you guys. Uh, but you literally will enter your, um, if you're putting it on the same server as the database, you can use localhost or you can use the IP address of your server. Uh, then you just have to literally enter your username and password. Now, a lot of people say don't use root, it makes you vulnerable and all this. If you're not doing anything too you know, public and anything too over the top, then just use root and just don't tell anybody. Um, I don't really see that as a problem, but obviously if, you, uh, if you're security conscious, then make a little user and make things complicated for yourself. Um, so then what we have here is uh, just the standard bit of PHP, which basically says um, if it can't connect, then it's going to output us a little error. Um, but this is so simple, it should connect. And if it doesn't, then you've probably got problems on your server with PHP uh, or you don't actually have a database. That's always a possibility. Um, so anyway, we then have to choose the database that we want it to read from. So we want it to read from tutorials. Um, and then this is all made clear here. So this is my um, web, uh, this is my PHP, my admin to my server. I've created a database uh, called tutorials. I've created a table inside it called scores. And then inside scores, I've entered two bits of information. I've entered a, a, a row for user and another, uh, sorry, a column for user and a column for score. And then I've entered two bits of information and I've put a name, a score, a name and a score. Now, if we go back to what we were doing here, we can see that what we're doing is we're doing uh, an SQL statement, which is like a, a query, which is going to be selecting everything. So the star means all. So select all from scores. And we know that scores is inside the tutorials and tutorials can be, to the tutorial database can be found at this address that we're going to be entering here which in my case is obviously not there, it's hidden. Um, so then what it's going to do is it's going to say while, the, uh, while we've got the results in here, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to just be lazy with the Windows phone. We just want it to output the information onto a page that we can then read with the phone. I mean, come on, this is a simple high scores table. Um, so we're just going to echo and then we're going to do the dollar row and then we're going to do user. So it's going to echo, first of all, providing it's found some information, it will echo the user for the first row it's found. Then we're going to use a dot, which is for concatenating a string in PHP, which means to, to kind of put a string together. Um, then we've entered uh, the, the old speech marks and our wiggly line that we were looking at before. Then we've done another dot for concatenating the next part of the information, which will be the score. And then another dot for concatenating the at sign. Now, this will basically do, this will be executed effectively twice because that's how many times I have it. I mean, it doesn't matter how many rows that you've got in your database. This, uh, this will give you everything because you've selected all. It will just keep echoing the user, then the score, the user, then the score, the user score, user score until it's got nothing left to execute. Um, now, this will come out on the page um, as we know we're going to get effectively something along these lines we're going to get Jamie and then we're going to have a wiggly line um, which I've now lost there it is uh, 100 and then it's going to be an at sign and then we're going to get James and then we're going to get a wiggly line and 80 with another at sign so that is what our phone is effectively going to be given now that doesn't make much sense to us, but to our app, it now is going to make sense because if we put our line, if we put it in here, we'll see that the first thing that happens is it splits the at signs. So effectively, we're splitting, first of all, here to give us this bit of information. And then the second split will become this next section. But it will also check and make another split of what's on this side of the at sign, which is why we would minus the one because there's nothing actually there and we don't want to know what's there because we'll get, you know, null information. So then that's how we realize that our total splits in this situation, you know, we've actually got two pieces of information here. But bearing in mind that the arrays start at zero, we effectively have one. We have zero and one, so we have two, but zero is counted. Um, so then we know that the first time it goes through, it's going to say, right, we're going to go for the first at sign, and then we're going to end up splitting it. So we're going to split this bit here. So we're literally going to have this left over. Now, in this next section in the while loop, it then splits our information on the wiggly line 
which then gives us split data zero and we know zero on this split data will be anything on the first part of this wiggly line which in this case will be Jamie and then we'll add the equal sign and then we'll add the number one and the number one means the other side of the wiggly line which will be the number 100 now if all goes to plan um, obviously we just the, the uh, MySQL close line here for closing the connection and that will be that so then what we have to do is simply run the app and make sure that everything is working so we have nothing here we have our little message saying no request has been sent we click get score it's checking for scores scores were found it says scores have been gathered and here we have Jamie 100 and James at 80 now if we go into the database here and we decide to insert I'm gonna insert I don't know is that Chris is that the Chris and Chris can have um, Chris can have 40 score because he's really not very good at whatever this game is um, and now we'll flick back if we get the scores again Chris has appeared in the list and if we go in and delete him he's removed from our app and it's just as simple as that this is how it works it will, it will just automatically take everything that it finds because we selected all now you can you can try and be all fancy and um, look on W3 scores for yourselves on how to do the ascending or descending. So providing you make the scores list uh, an integer, you can do it by ascending or descending to make sure you've got the lowest or the highest score, depending on which way you want it to go, if it's a times challenge or if it's a score, you know, gathering challenge. Um, and then you can also limit the, amount, um, limit the amount of results that you actually get back. So it will give you, say, if you do, ascend, if you do it in like um, a descending, and then take the first 10 then you're going to get the top 10 scores so i hope that will make sense um i've got a feeling it probably won't and i've probably just i don't know let leash like hell or something but i will try and answer any questions you guys have um regarding what we're doing here and if you want any uh any other sort of tutorials that you're thinking ah oh, i really want to know this well insert this into uh, some sort of message to me and I'll, uh, I'll try and get the tutorials made for you um, but yeah as usual guys uh, thanks for um, thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe check out my patreon page I mean the more patreons I get the more videos I'll actually be able to make other than that I'm getting rushed off my feet but I mean if I get a few more patreons um, I'll probably be able to make a heck of a lot more videos and dedicate a lot more time to this so that's the end of the 13th tutorial guys and I will see you in the next one Let's <laughs> go.